black, 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 yeah. black, nothing, nothing, nothing. This is What the Flock Radio's Birds of a Feather. We are an indie music focus show rife with witty, fuck laden, insanely interesting, and unhinged banter. Our thematic submissions will confuse, infuse, and delight you, while our fascinating, fun features fluster, flummox, fulfill, and thrill you. Well, you might be wondering who the fuck are you? And I get that. Um, I am the vocalist for the rock band Ascent, that's A S N T. You can find us on your favorite music platforms by searching ASNT and ASNT Rocks. And trust me, you're going to want to. We have a new single out called Dear Malcontent. Is that why you said, who the fuck are you? Is that possibly part of the lyric? No, it it is part of the lyric, but that's actually not why I said it, but it did occur to me later. But um, You're quoting your own song without knowing it. I know, right? Seriously. So, I mean, I I think you should give it a listen. It's it's quite uh, heavy, quite heavy, and it's uh, the... One and only song I've written so far with the word fuck in it. And I think it's really, really fun. That's quite a feat so, if you know Christina. <laughs> it is. that That's the first one. So uh, who are you? And then I'll do my hoot at. So who are you, fine, uh, fine sir? All uh, right. I'm, uh, and I'm uh, Professor B. Soup, uh, uh, international rock legend, radiant savant, amateur wildlife photographer, the original OG sweet and sour chow boy, and... Uh, <laughs> Also, <laughs> it's in a song, so You're it's not got the, it, the original Dum Dum Boy. And, yeah, I'm the original Dum. I'm, no, I'm an I'm an old school sweet and sour chai boy, but the original Dum Dum Boy. Got it. Uh, and you know, I don't know. I'm looking at my life, and it's like, mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be radio personalities. Okay, you know, the regrets, the recriminations. I made a major rock star look like Watercress last time, and it was not my intention oh. at all. Ooh. That was terrible. And before we proceed, I do want to say one thing. I want to remind the audience of one thing. That now, at this time of the year, a lot of uh, quite a few albums are having anniversaries. You know, big time ones like from back in the Stone Age. Uh, Physical Graffiti's 48 years old. Billion Dollar Babies is 50 years old. Queen Two, 49 years old, and you know, everybody's like, oh, that makes me feel old. Dark I, I don't, Side of the Moon? I never think that. Uh, this time of year, was it? Though? I don't know. 50. But it's, uh, oh, it's 50. Mm-hmm. No, it's 71, Dark Side of the Moon. Was it 52? Was 50 this I think it's 52. Ooh. I don't know. That's like the oldest one. That was before any of these. Before you know? any of them. But uh, and but we forgot to, first, and, and a lot of people say, like, oh, that makes me feel old. It's, it's I don't feel, you, what, you didn't know how old you were before somebody told you that? <laughs> I remember being very, very young when those records came out, and I count myself blessed to have been there. Oh, yeah. And to have been, I mean, all these legendary, iconic things were new releases. That was that was the world we lived in, and I'm very happy about it. Telling somebody about this, I said, my radio partner, he was at this. He was there when this came out, and they were just like a gape. I mean, just like to think that you were there when it came out. Yeah, I mean, here's our new album, Hotel California. Like, you know, what it's the just fuck? like yeah, <laughs> iconic. I remember when uh, Bill, uh, Billion Dollar Baby. I remember when Physical Graffiti came out very well. It's crazy. You know? Uh, and listening to Cashmere for you know fifty year, forty eight years or something like that, <laughs> but uh, at, but we forgot to mention ours. Mm. Our uh, three year anniversary was well, it's like a month ago now. It was uh, like a month ago, February fourteenth. You know That's that right. day, that Valentine's Day for all you love people out there. Um, that was our third. So forgot to say it, but That's uh, right. that we was are our here. Third anniversary. This is our fourth year doing this show. You know, holy and shit! It really thinking about that really brings me back because I remember it so well. You were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar well, when I true. met you. you know? This much is true. I picked you out. I shook you up and turned you around and turned you into someone new. You know, and the rest is history. So uh, uh, we're going to proceed with the show, and uh, we uh, we hope we Just know. Just a second. What you met me as a as a waitress in a cocktail bar. That much is true. The rest of it. I cannot speak You're going to tell me you would have made a much better place either with or without me? Is that That's what you're right. going to tell with me? With or without you. Hey, I can put you back there too. And I hope hopefully they know the song and the audience is like these two like, are these, sick. Yeah, these, they're fucked up. I know. Exactly. <laughs> these two are fucked up. <laughs> but uh we are we apologize. We had all the best intentions in the world to be on the air every week and then yeah. there's like too much work, there's sickness, there's this and that. I mean, you can only be so sick if you can't talk and do a show yeah, which has happened work. and terrible things have gotten in the way. Yeah. And we we know you have missed our convoluted splendor uh of the show. <laughs> you like that term? I, I just made that up just now. And Christina's like, no, you didn't, motherfucker. No, you didn't. That's my lyric, That's man. That's my lyric, motherfucker. Okay, uh, it, I, I confess. I took that from her lyric. We don't want any extravagant turmoil here on the show. 
Okay, that one I just came up with. You no, you did not, not motherfucker. That's mine. <laughs> okay, that's hers too. And for <laughs> and for little word couplets, uh, a plenty. Uh, listen to old ascent. Uh, the song intentions, if I seem to recall yes. correctly. Yeah. All right. Anyway, but oh. um, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a flutter. Thank it's you. It's amazing stuff, really. All right. So what's the what's the beef here? What's going on? What's the beef? Well, I'm going to do my who dat and see if you can get it. Oh, good. I get a rest. You're not supposed to say that shit. <laughs> oh, say it in the quiet powder out loud. Yeah, don't, don't say it at all. Okay. okay. Say good things about <clears throat> the show. Say good things about That's the show. That's a hard one to remember after a whole month. Is you know? it? Yeah. After a whole month. <laughs> Holy shit. So this is my little who dat. This is what I do. So are you ready? Uh, Yeah. yeah. My mother approved my stage name. I produced 15 hit singles from 1973 to 1976. I was knighted in 1995 and again in 1998. Bowie and I had a falling out. I have a feud with Madonna because I criticized her Die Another Day Bond theme. In 1994, I was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by Axl Rose. Eminem helped keep me sober. I own homes in France, L.A., and Atlanta. I am known to play Nina Simone, Aretha Franklin, Diana Krall, and Blossom Deary whenever the mood strikes me. I'm sorry. Knighted? How do you get knighted twice? In what? Another country? For two different things. Oh. 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 It's, so it's like a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Yeah. You can be there for three different things. Hey, he's a radio, right. television, movies, you know. That's right. You can, yeah, you can. Uh, you can be knighted. I did not know that. Speaking yes. of knighting, uh, the audience will find this interesting that uh, King Charles III knighted his very first knight and do you know who it was christina no this has nothing to do with my hoodat by the way uh no. that's true brian may okay huh. but the person that, that's new though so it isn't him so you have a person who was knighted twice new bowie and uh so it's not the usual bowie people it's not reed it's not iggy it's uh who's watercress it um <laughs> nope it's not damn it uh i do pretty well with hoodats but this is a stumper elton john you know, I was going to say him. I was going to say him because I know. Shit. Ah, yes. You should have said it. I should have said it. You should have. You, you know, I would have been floored and it would have been. That's true. A, you could be knighted for a good moment in, in radio. Damn. I, I, I thought it, but why didn't I say it? It was chicken shit. I didn't say You're it. chicken shit afraid. because you were worried that it was wrong. But and you know I, what? It was I, always so right. I'm imagining he's uh, been knighted for, of course, his uh, artisti- uh, artistry, mm-hmm. but also for some philanthropic works, too, because mm-hmm. uh, that's what they knighted. They didn't knight uh, Roger Moore because of his acting. They knighted him because of his uh, his charitable work. Well, of course, yeah. Um, so, you wouldn't um, knight him for his acting. What? You wouldn't knight him for his acting. No, I mean, no, I mean he's a fantastic presence on screen, but he wasn't a phenomenal actor no, or anything. He's yeah, fine. No, I mean. I mean, he's come on, James Bond, okay, but yeah, he was fine. <laughs> All right, so I should have said it. I, 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 I wussed out. I, I, I copped out. I'm not like Shaft, you know, the man, the cat who won't cop out when there's danger all about. That's not me. I just copped out. So. You did. Sorry. That's too bad. But anyway, Elton John. So interesting stuff. Interesting little factoids. But now I turn it over to you for something you probably didn't know. But uh, there it is. Uh, yes, and as you know. You know how game I always am to read these themes, no matter how how out there they are. But the first one is just saying the new th- is saying our current theme, which is not crazy. But the next one is crazy. Oh, I have to do something before the crazy part. Well, okay, all right. Let me see. Are you sure it doesn't say that here? Oh, yes, it does. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> all right. So the restatement, the recapitulation, <laughs> the representation of tonight's theme for the show that is yet looming before you and over you. Uh, <laughs> Siren Songbirds. Uh, on occasion, uh, Christina conducts a theme search in Bandcamp, uh, and of course, it's Christina, definitely not me, in an effort to find new music, and it was Siren Songbirds. Did you miss our themed requests? Well, they are coming back, and here it comes. This is one, I, and I know I have uh, very gamely stepped up and been happy to... You know, try to present the most tongue-trippingly bizarre and uh, out there and stretchy uh, themes. But this one, <clears throat> I mean that in a good way. It takes a hell of a skill. But this one, I am delighted to deliver. It's my fondest hope, and I would love to borrow the voice of the great David Clayton Thomas for one night to do some karaoke, because that was him doing lead vocals on that sensational song, You've Made Me So Very Happy, which was by Blood, Sweat, and Tears in 1969. And this is this is the age. This is when I was coming up. I was That's hearing right. all this stuff. What goes up must come down. What Spin and wheel got up. to go round. Yep. Uh. Brilliant band. Incredible band. And they supposedly, I haven't seen the footage in quite some time, but they just... 
ate it up at Woodstock. They were nice. they were absolutely red hot, and I've heard some of it recently. So but anyway, what is the so theme? the theme Smooth made me so very happy. I'm sorry, it's the only way, and you've been doing I've it. Been you know, doing it all of course day. you have. I've been and doing now it for days. so will everybody else. So will the listeners. The songs, uh, the themes concern songs about happiness, joy, and optimism. All right, no boo hoo here. So with that happy theme, we're not liable to get a lot of screamy bush and that sort of thing and uh, the anguishy. And uh, uh, we might get some uh, theatrical, cheesy corner theatrical and not Probably. spectral. But uh, we'll we shall see. see with this next amazing episode. But tonight on to Siren Songbirds. Yes, so yes, we will be hearing some songs uh, concerning sirens and that sort of a theme. But before... We go on to play the first of five artists. I want to introduce something that's a little different. It's actually a new sort of feature called Chrisel Unclear. For this every few shows feature, we are challenged to use a selected phrase as much as possible throughout the show. And since these phrases are Chrisel Unclear, our use of them will likely follow suit. And this time, our phrase is for the birds. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Well, yes. that's, that's, uh, I tell you, we've had some real challenges with the uh, Finchworthy slang before, yes. but, uh, this sounds, uh, like a, uh, walk in the park here. Well, and the meaning means something trivial or worthless. It's a shortened form of a phrase that referred to birds that would peck at horse droppings. For the birds was used as a U.S. Army slang during World War II. So only the droppings are worth. I mean, they're worth worthy of the birds Those and nothing else. Birds. So exactly. anything that was uh, deserved shit is uh, for the birds. That's exactly uh, correct. Which is uh, not how we have come to use it. That is correct. So for the birds, you know what is not for the birds? This first artist. No, this, you don't find acts that are for the birds. You do. No, I will not find acts that are for the birds. But we have to listen to Lacey L, and her song is. I know this is going to be shocking. It's called Siren. <laughs> So, nailed it. <laughs> and Lacey is alternative pop, and she is from the UK. Let's take a listen to Lacey. See you swimming underneath me in the water. Sunlight glowing to unearthly under your skin. Want to take me back down with you in the water? We're so well to my girls and to my scales. Cause all of my life, I've been looking for you. All of my life, I've been looking for you. All of my life, I've been looking for you all. All, all of my life, life I've been looking for you. All of my life, looking for you all. Of my life.
All right, Lacey L. with Siren. There's so much, so much to unpack from this one. Um, to me, like when I first heard the song, and again, you know, I only listened to a little bit of it, it sounds like a wind-up doll a little bit um, at the very beginning. And I love that. It sounds like she's kind of like a wind-up doll. And I just thought it was so cute. And uh, I felt like it was... I, I describe this as otherworldly, whimsical, playful, smart, and thoughtful pop. And that's how I like my pop. Um, I, I heard Tori Amos, St. Vincent. I heard PJ Harvey. I heard so many, um, maybe, you know, I don't know, just some some really obscure but amazing. Like Bjork, you know. Yeah, like I heard a little bit of all of those, but mostly Tori, St. Vincent, and PJ Harvey heard a lot of that. Maybe a little Kate Bush in there, mm-hmm. um, but certainly heard some of those. And the um, the movie Toys. Have you ever seen that with Robin Williams in it? Um, it is this. No, I don't think so. Crazy movie, and it's so good. And the music was so quirky. And I think there was a Bjork song in there. This song belonged in there. It's definitely what that movie needs, and it's what we need. This is Let's just get how it I on like the Toys uh, 40th anniversary reissue. I mean, seriously, this is just how I like my pop. I love it. Yeah, when uh, I know Lacey L. Soren in the UK, very nice. Um, I when it started, it, it was it sounded like a really kind of a dangerous Madonna, and as you said, sort of a wind up doll. That's that's the the Alice Cooper vibe I got from it too. It has that kind of a sound to it. And by the way, when I say something sounds like Madonna, that's a high compliment coming from me. I mean, a lot of people foolishly dismiss. But Madonna's music is excellent for the most part. We were rocking to something in the restaurant tonight. For the most part. I mean, La Isla Bonita was on tonight. I'm talking that kind of stuff. Come on. Uh, But then it gets way more progressive. And I got to tell you, the most challenging thing we do here is trying to read back, because we do this in real time. We listen to the song, we write down Escape Mental Patient notes, and we try to interpret the hieroglyphics when we're reading them back. It's not easy. That's that's the feat. If you're going to salute us for something, it should be that. Well, um, all the work and find the artists. I think there's some others. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, all right, put it this way. If you're going to salute me, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things you could salute Christina for, like the whole damn show, for example. <laughs> I just wanted a little credit yeah. for finding the No, 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 no. no. If, if we haven't said it enough tonight, uh, I say it every time, but you know it's... But then it gets, like I said, it gets way more progressive, and it's like avant-garde, kind of almost on yeah. a level with Bowie. And uh, Kate Bush, I, I I thought too because I'm more familiar with her than than some of the other ones you named. And, you know Tori. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, believe me, yeah, I certainly know I was Tori. Like, Wait a minute. Yeah, I, yeah I, that. Yeah, that yeah. too. Yeah, I I know Tori. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> I met Tori. I'll t- I told you. All right, let me see. Um, but it 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 does have the the motif, the C feel to it. It seems like it would be the musical backdrop you said for. The toys. toys movie. I'm think. I was thinking like this really stunning Cirque du Soleil type performance, you know, mm, or something that like that. Amazing. You know, in the sea, uh, that whole that whole uh, the mo- O the thing. Motif. It could be to O. Oh, o oh is the one that's in the water. That would be amazing. This would be oh, amazing. Oh. oh, did I just say O? Oh, yeah. So if you're just listening to this and you're from Cirque du Soleil, go ahead and pass on that. Uh, Lacey L should be the back back music for O oh, because it'd be amazing. At five percent agent fee, that that's pretty yeah, reasonable. That's at least five, five to ten. Yeah, we we get five to ten. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, we, and we think we're being generous. Escalating you know. scale. Yeah, we're being generous. Yeah. And uh, but and they really they illustrate this. They they make this uh, real that for you to experience with the sounds and the music and the effects mm-hmm. and everything. It's like what they would have called in the classical days a tone poem of oh sorts. My. Yeah. Uh, and you know it is. It, there's this wonderful ethereal piano break after that. Mm-hmm. I mean, if this is a siren, I and I'm a ship. I'm running a ship. I am crashing a fucker into you the rocks. Really okay, are. because this is you're alluring. Going right in, yeah, you're uh, crashing. Fabulous work, uh, folks. Absolutely, so amazing. And you can find Lacey L on Facebook at Lacey L A C I E L L E Music. <sighs> Love her so. I think it's time for you to make things Kestrel clear. I think that would be a mistake. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. It is my Unless considered opinion, uh, if my con- opinion is being considered. It is not. Okay. No, it is not. I All mean, because right. if it's not Kestrel, then we may have a problem because that's the feature's name. But, you know, you could change things up. Who knows? Well, the thing about Kestrel that appeals to uh, lazy sod like me is that it really doesn't require any uh, intellectual labor. Mm. Because these are, although honestly... 
I tried. These are songs that are the meanings of which are quite plain. That's the whole idea. <clears throat> because for this feature, we discuss lyrics that are everything they seem. There's no room for interpretation. They're plain, and of course, they could either suck or they could rock. It's not likely we're going to pick the sucky ones, but sometimes that's fun, I got to say. It's fun. Uh, and uh, seriously, with my level of participation in recent shows very dangerously close to actual work, it's time. Oh I mean, I was right on the right on the brink. You know, we're on the cusp. Uh, and you know, that's not how things go. You know, it is. It's it's it's, it's a the new it's normal. a proven it's a it's not a proven formula. It's a net new thing. Net new thing. You know, it's time to grab some very low hanging fruit in terms of features. So I took Kestrel Clear. See the mm. liberty I have here? I'm not a slave. I get to pick my own features. Just so you know, he's always been able to pick his own features. He just didn't choose to do so. But. Since I still have my dignity to think about, I'm going to avoid I love you songs where the meaning is clearly I love you. Ah. Uh, you know, even though I'm not that lazy. And as before, when I did David Bowie, who was not known for Chuck Berry-like plain spokenness. True. Uh, but he did a song that made sense to me at least, so I did that one. Uh, this time, I'm going to also not completely cop out. I'm t- going to try to be Shaft and not cop out here because <laughs> oh, there's danger all about, oh, like no. I did before. And present a song played by a band very decidedly known for their unambiguous lyrics. Mm. However, just because the meaning is plain doesn't mean the words can't also be completely fucking bonkers. <laughs> and those two are never wed so well as in the music of the Ramones. Well, that's true. Uh, yeah, quite a few songs one could pick from their canon. Perhaps one of their mental illness classics or their many murder songs. Sure. They have a sh- no shortage of those. Uh, but uh, because though they are a good time, fun loving band, I mean they're really fun to listen to. They've drawn considerable inspiration from their affection for slasher movies, uh, chainsaws and things like that. You know, ritual sacrifices and all that. Well, yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, run you know, of the mill, uh, mass shootings. You know, the whole totally. Bit. The song I've chosen tonight isn't either of those, but it does touch upon two minor fixations of theirs, and they've got a number of them. Appearing on their first album, tonight's little Kestrel Claire ditty is called "Judy Is a Punk." Mm. <laughs> I wonder what that's about. Okay, so I'm going to start by reading the libretto, uh, as it were, and uh, <laughs> we've got to go classical here. Might as well. And I think, well, in the movie Rock and Roll High School, the music teacher tells them they're like modern-day Beethoven, so I'm just kind of running with that whole idea. <laughs> it's such a classic. <laughs> <laughs> Ramones Rock and Roll High School, folks. Okay. Uh, so I'll read the libretto, as it were, and I think you'll agree that it's very straightforward and yet somehow very inspired and twisted at the same time. And it begins... Jackie is a punk. Judy is a runt. They both went down to Berlin, joined the ice capades. And oh, I don't know why. Oh, I don't know why. Perhaps they'll die. Hmm. Ice capades lead to death. Is that the leading cause of death? Yes, ice capades. A favorite career trajectory for punks and runts since time out of mind. Sure, of course. Okay, the song's called Judy is a Punk. But then they tell us Jackie is a punk, Judy is a runt, from which we can only deduce, if we want to do that kind of head work, that Judy is both a punk and a runt. Of course. Uh, and Jackie is uh, just a punk, and if she's a runt, we're not told. Soon to be a runt. Soon to be a runt. And, I mean, this is what punks and runts did in the 70s. That's they right. joined the Ice Capades in Berlin. Um, like it's so, easy to join the Ice Capades. And, oh, I don't know why, he sings, perhaps they'll die. Uh, hearkening back, do you remember to that delightful children's song about the old lady who swallowed a fly? I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't and know then why. proceeds to ingest all sorts of creatures in a deranged attempt to undo her previous poor decisions? Of course. Continuing in a hideous spiral, ultimately cul- culminating in her death. Uh, you know the one. Nightmare fuel for young, impressionable minds. You know, she's Absolutely. eating flies and spiders and cats and... Okay. In addition to that cute tossed-off reference, they then borrow a line from a, a Herman's, Hermes, Herman's Hermits classic we've spoken about on another show. Second verse, same as the first, which is from, of course, Henry VIII. Yes. I'm Henry VIII, I am. So there's no read for me to reread it, because it's the same as the first. That whole bit about Judy and punks and, and the ice capades. Uh, however, after the second verse, which, as promised, was the same as the first, we get this little twist. Joey sings... Third verse, different from the first. Mm. I mean, so it isn't as if they're they're taking the easy road here. No, you know? no. They're putting it they're putting in due diligence, yeah. Now we're told that Jackie is a punk, Judy is a runt. They both went down to Frisco, joined the SLA. Oh <laughs> Holy shit. All right. I think we talked about them on History Strikes Back once, you know. 
Uh, the SLA for you younger pe- younger people. That's the Symbionese Liberation Army. Well, of course. Who robbed banks and you know kidnapped heiress Patty Hearst among other things. Uh, I mean, you may have gone ice capades instead of yeah. SLA, but you know, if you had a choice, you know, I, I'm going to guess this is even more perilous employment pursuit than even the Berlin ice capades. Even. Know? I yes. mean, well, uh, but uh, could you die in this one though? Uh, I mean, you could. I, I mean, mean the, you're, the cops are liable to shoot you in this in the SLA. I mean, the Berlin they, escapades. I don't know what happens but there. They didn't mention it. Maybe the, the bear gets said, you. You know. I mean, I'm just saying, escapades. They said she'll probably die. Perhaps SLA, they'll die. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, yeah. there's a probability yeah. here. I'm hearing no probability. Although you and I know. Oh, that's that comes not afterwards true. too. Yeah, oh, that's they're right. also told okay. that perhaps they'll die from the. Oh, okay. You figure they would make it a little more certain, but it's the same thing. No, so it's like it's a fifty-fifty. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if the odds are the same, Good luck. Berlin Ice Capades, SLA. Yeah. You, you're, y- pl- you're probably going to die yes. equally as likely. That's right. And uh, uh, now, <laughs> however, but lest fans be worried to death about the fate of our protagonists, the Ramones assured us that Jackie and Judy did indeed survive the ice capades. And the SLA. Well, shit. In the, in the rare appearance, the return of Jackie and Judy appeared on the 1980 album End of the Century, produced by everyone's favorite murderous mop top, Phil oh, Spector. Phil Spector. Who probably made them write the song at gunpoint. Probably. <laughs> it's like, I'd love that song. Do a That's sequel right. now. <laughs> well, we know he's done that before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, they even said so. Yep, uh, held them captive. Yeah. Uh, I, Johnny has a good attitude about it. He's like, you know what? Oh, yeah, it was pretty stressful. <laughs> But you think we made a, a record with the legend of rock and roll, and uh, you know probably we survived. The, yeah, I mean the last two things everybody thinks of Phil Spector doing: let it be and killing end of someone. the century. Yeah, and killing someone. <laughs> After <laughs> somebody should have let him do a record, he might have kept him off the street. That's you know? right. Apparently, being threatened with a gun can make one pretty uh, pretty verbose uh, because. You think? This song has a lot more words than your average Ramon song. I'm not going to read them all. However, no, I just don't. I just know I will, or that's two songs for one. But I, I got to go a little bit outside. Just yeah. a little. Okay, uh, just to see what happened to Jack and Judy. I don't want you to lose sleep over this. Okay, these. Fictitious, I mean, I know what happened to Jack and Diane. So I feel good. Characters. Life goes on. Yeah. Hansel and Gretel. But does I know. life go on for Jack and Judy? That's the question. Jackie is a punk. Judy is a run. It got actually it. starts we the same it. way. Okay. They went down to the Mud Club. You remember the Mud Club, famous uh, nightclub in New York City, yeah. mentioned in uh, Life During Wartime by the Talking Heads. Absolutely. They both they went down to the Mud Club, and they both got drunk. Oh, yeah, whoa, oh. Nothing about dying here. Thank God. Jackie is a bookie. Judy's taking loans. They both came up to New York just to see the Ramones. I love that, frankly. Uh, so nothing nothing too dramatic there. But nothing you know about what? their dying. But no, but both of those occupations have hazards. Oh, yeah. Bookies and loans. They do. Up to including death. That's true. That's true. I mean... Just saying. Yeah. Loan but sharks, bookies. It went up to up to New York, which I don't know where they were, that they had to go up to New York, but to yeah, see them. Very cool how they mentioned themselves. Mm. Uh, uh, or lame, depending. De- it depends on who you are and what you believe. It, it, you know, it depends on your on your bit, too. I mean, I talk about myself all the time. Half of my songs are about myself. Hmm. So at the end of the day, if you want to have a great time and rock out to some deliriously fun music that definitely contains wry humor but won't be too much of a strain on the old coconut, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> the Ramones are your go-to guys. You know, they got a big, big can and a big body of work, too. Yeah, sure, you, we might say, who thinks of this stuff? But we're never going to say, I wonder what it means, because Ramones never burden us with ponderous allegories or metaphors, no. but everything is Kestrel clear. That's true. Hey, that was a great one. So um, let's go to another great one. And this is a band called Codex, which I think is kind of a really cool name. And the song name, I know this is a stretch, but it's Song to the Siren. Nice. <laughs> and right on theme. And they are singer-songwriter... Uh, alternative pop. So we got a little bit of pop, and this is pop from England. So let's take a moment and listen to Codex. Longer flow up shipless ocean I did all my best to smile to your singing eyes and fingers Waiting 
So we have just listened to "Song for the Siren" by Codex, and I think Codex. I think it's some kind of like sci-fi nerd word or something like that. It's either, I think it's a real scientific term, is what I mean. You know. Yes. Uh, another the UK once again, and this uh, the vocal is it reminds me a little bit, and I know probably a lot of people would say this is Billie Eilish, but with less vocal fry, which honestly is a pretty good thing. And uh, I loved it. It was just gorgeously haunting. And I won't say the S word, but it was kind of that, too. Uh, <laughs> you should now, see, if Codex is listening, they're not going to know what the S word is. Spectral. Spectral, yeah. spectral. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't that spectral. It was like, you know, it was ethereal? more... Ethereal? Ethereal, yeah. Yes, it was like ethereal. It, yeah, it was like some, ethereal. some fan, fantastical. Yes. And there's a, there's a really cool uh, thing with the treatment of the voice uh, is changed to where, I mean, it's the same singer, so it would seem, but it, it's like different facets of this, of the narrator's, you know, being or whatever. And when you hear about something being haunting and being uh, alluring and seductive and everything, a siren song, this is precisely the kind of thing that they would be talking about. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with you. I feel like it's interesting because this was like warm and earnest and there was a fragility about it, but then also a strength about it, which was really interesting. And the vocal treatment, like you said, is is intentional. And I feel like at the very beginning, you're hearing like a, it almost sounds like the vocalist is like in a weakened state, like very, like almost labored, having trouble, like in so much pain, right? Kind of thing. I'm feeling a lot of, um, like there's a lot of emoting going on. And there's one, there's one purging, phrase... Yeah, yeah that has no effect on it and it's newborn child and that stood out to me because maybe this is a rebirth and I thought wow that's pretty profound but one of the things that I noticed about this song too that I didn't get because again I only listened to a few seconds of it and it has to get me right is that I felt like we were losing her like the whole time she's more and more buried behind this wall of sound it's like she's further and further away almost like drifting and, out right. you know and she's still waiting there mm-hmm. to hold you and i just i i felt like suffocated at the end i felt overwhelmed because i feel like we were losing her 
because maybe she's losing herself in this. So I just thought, wow, this was super emotional for me. Yeah. And just really, really beautiful. And I am really happy that I stumbled upon Codex. And there's a lot more for you to listen to. So go to Facebook and you can find them at one, the number one, Codex, C O D E X. Thank you, the UK, and thank you, England. Holy crap. Very nice. All right. So. Various songbirds. This is again. I'm just. I'm. <laughs> I'm. I, hey, did you hear that maniacal laugh? No, that was not a diabolical laugh. It was maniacal and that diabolical. was the. This is going to be fun and fair and that friendly. That is not what that it laugh, was. Laugh, you know. That. <laughs> <laughs> you did all but twist your mustache. Come uh, on. I, I I I fought back the urge to do the Renfield laugh. <laughs> okay. It was implied. Yeah, it was. Implied. It was implied. All right. Well, I go first this time. So various songbirds for this feature. We. Uh, actually list the lyrics from songs and see if we can stump the other person in a head-to-head battle. And I will say normally I'm the one who is stumped and stomped by this game because he's merciless and cares not for me at all. But that's okay. Lyrics are... are, Everybody has their weaknesses and hers is lyrics. Yeah, yours are just being kind. (laughs) So that's okay. Um, Lyrics from the 70s are not my thing. That is certainly true. I don't know every everyone. I don't. I don't pick those. Yeah, you do. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm going to go back and listen to some shows. Uh, So I go first this time. So let's see. Somebody with too much time on their hands will present us with statistics on that. (laughs) That's true. Exactly. So I'll I'll wait for you to do that. So here we go. This whole damn world can fall apart. You'll be okay. Follow your heart. You're in harm's way. I'm right behind. Now say you're mine. Uh oh, this whole damn world will fall apart. That's the part that. Oh, I know this song, and then the rest of it was like, okay, but that's not part of the song I thought it was. As if I, and not that I had a name for the song I thought it was either. One more time, please. The whole damn world. I'm sorry. <clears throat> this whole damn world can fall apart. You'll be okay. Follow your heart. You're in harm's way. I'm right behind. Now say you're mine. The melody will leap retroactively into my brain and attach itself to every single word of that. Once you tell me what it is, that's after I concede defeat, which I have done. <laughs> it is You Get What You Give by the New Radicals. This whole damn world can fall apart. Be okay, follow your... No, you don't have Oh, any... okay. So I feel better now because that's a song that like you get four you... people in the world know. You know. Are you fucking No, it I'm kidding. It's probably one. a huge hit, but... The tar. No, I I don't know that one. So I do feel better not... It's from the 90s. Oh, the 90s. Well, I was dead in the 90s. You were yeah. not. That's I, not true. At least was... I'm not kicking myself over a song that I didn't know in the first place. You should place. be kicking yourself because you should know that song because it's from the 90s and you weren't dead. All right. Well, I'm trying to be fair to you here, too. Uh, so we'll we'll see. See. I know you meant well. You know. We'll see. Uh, you know, we'll we have see. had, honestly, some amazing weather here in Southern California recently. Shitloads of rain, which more than we've get in years, which is pretty beautiful. And there's this strange, unnatural color. I think they call it green everywhere. You know. But also, I saw some That's really true. striking, puffy, cumulus clouds the other day, and I thought, you know, they look just like the cotton balls I'm going to be lobbing underhand to Christina on mm. various songbirds. Interesting. And here they come. Here come the co- Here's cotton ball number one. Mm. Well, I was there. I can expand this, but this should be enough. Well, I was there, and I saw what you did. I saw it with my own two eyes. So you can wipe off that grin. I know where you've been. It's all been a pack of lies. It's all been a pack of lies. Bump, 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 bump. No, that's no stranger to you and me. Bump, 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 bump. Yeah. Beautiful, brilliant. And, uh, In the air tonight. By whom exactly? Phil Collins. Just didn't just want to be sure you didn't say Genesis or something like that. I think it was I Phil know Collins. my Genesis. <laughs> Phil that Collins, was, that's indeed. That's one of the best songs ever. See? Cotton ball lobbed underhand. I mean, okay. okay. I, I thought that the 90s were pretty cotton ball-y, but we'll see. Not for me, no. And yeah. We'll find out. Little Precious has a natural obsession for temptation, but he just can't see. She give him loving that his body can't handle, but all he can say is, baby, it's good to me. This is one of those 90s ones that I don't know. Um, uh, More defeat. Sorry, what is it? Really? Yep, really. TLC's Waterfalls? Oh, I know the the chorus only, which, of course, you can't do. No, I can't. That's the only one I know. And Weird Al Yankovic did a parody of it, which is regrettable. You won't want to hear about. <laughs> yeah, most of them, I, yeah, they're regrettable, but funny. Yeah. Don't go making phony calls. Yes, it's one of those. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's really weird. I thought you would know these because they're sorry. super right out there. All right. Well. And you're, an, you're a nineties guy too. Nah, I'm not really a nineties guy. I don't you think. are. You are. All right, here we go. All How right. about because um, they told me when I was younger, saying, "Boy, you're going to be president." But just like everything else, those old crazy dreams just kind of came and went. 
Oh, shit, I know this one. Mm, yeah, you do. Every every human being on Earth knows this one. OMG. I can read the previous verse. It's not that. That's allowed, I think. The bylaws? There are no bylaws. Well, there's a young man in a T-shirt listening to a rock and roll station. He's got greasy hair, greasy smile. He says, Lord, this must be my destination. Is this John Cougar? John um, Mellencamp? Sounds like John Mellencamp. The uh, the correct answer is actually John Cougar Mellencamp. Oh, my God. At the time. I, I, I thought you were going to name the song first and then that, and I was going to decide whether the judges would uh, allow you to say John Cougar or John Mellencamp, because it's neither. It was the transitional John Cougar Mellencamp from the amazing Uh Huh album. Oh, did I just say that? Such a great album. Yeah. Um, WPDH loved it. They played that shit all the time. I love it. it was great. Is this the Authority song? No, I was gonna do the Authority song. I was gonna it's do. I was gonna do Crumbling Down, except I was oh. afraid you'd get the title wrong. I, oh. You when know, Tumbling walls. Down. It's but the, the title's actually Crumbling, crumbling down. down. Yeah. Oh shit. It's uh, It's alongside those, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, of course it President. is. President, I can hear it. Oh, you're gonna freak. Ain't that America? Uh, yeah. Go on. What's the name of the song? That That's the next line. Something to see, baby. Ain't that America? Oh, mother free. Oh, why am I singing this song? <laughs> Little Pink Houses. Ah. For you and me. Fuck. The song is Pink actually house. called? Little Pink Houses. Pink Houses, yeah. Well, Close enough. Well, yeah. Judges will allow it because they're much more lenient than I. You know? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> you so. are the judge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So All right, you now, got that. Now I'm really of. worried about these. Yeah. Fuck. I well, thought, apparently I thought I, with good cause. No, I thought I gave you some low-hanging. But these are like I, I like biggest hits. These biggest are, hits. These are not this is pop. low-hanging. They're, they're is, buried in the ground. No, this is pop biggest hits of that time. I was like, a dead man. Top ten. I was married. I was dead. <laughs> you know how married people are disconnected from the real world? I swore, I swore I would be true, and honey, so did you. So were you holding her, uh, sorry, so why were you holding her hand? Is that the way we stand? Were you lying all the time? Was it just a game to you? Um, I can, a, a cadence, a rhythm is, is coming in my mind, which probably has nothing to do with these lyrics. But probably I, does. Uh, but, da, 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 it's, but I can't place it. Uh, third defeat. Is that the way we stand? Um, do you have to? Do you have to? Do you, do you have, have to, to let, let it linger? linger? Yeah, yeah, see, I don't know the, the chorus again. It's the chorus one, I no, know. No, but that, that's, Cranberries the, linger, but that's right? the pre-chorus. So yeah. that's the one that went, <clears throat> na, 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 na. You know, so it, it leads in, so it's the it's kind of a pre-chorus, so. Yeah, I'm very I'm very rusty on my cranberries, thank you. Wow, well, you knew it as soon as we started singing it. I just can't have linger be yeah. the thing. Yeah, oh, no, you can't say that. Okay, here's a good one for you. All right. Great song. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Welcome to your life. There's no turning back. Even while we sleep, we will find you. Acting on your best behavior, turn your back on Mother Nature. Everybody wants to rule the world. Everybody, tears for fears. <laughs> right? Did I tell you it was a great song? That's such a great song. And well, it? Tears for Fears is underrated. Oh, they're they're grossly underrated. Ingenious. All right. Okay. Lay in, lay my next, my fourth and final defeat Fuck, on me. I will not do these again. I thought for sure I was like, oh, he's going to be like, oh my god, that is so fun, and you're not. Now those those would be good hummingbirds, probably. Well, not the one. I didn't know that one all, but like linger. Then you could have done the chorus, and if I would have gone. No, if I let you hear, you would know these songs. Probably. You would. Uh, lately, I have desperately pondered, spent my nights awake, and I wonder what I could have done in another way to make you stay. Uh oh. Pondered, wondered. That sounds familiar. Lately, I have what? Uh, lately, I've desperately pondered. Spent my nights awake, and I wonder what I could have done in another way to make you stay. Now, I know this one because that another way to make you stay, I'm going to be going to be in my head. As soon as you say it, fourth feet, complete strikeout. What is it? Fourth love defeat. Loveful by Cardigans. Oh. Love me, love me. me. Say that you Such love me. Such a great me. song. Fool it me, is fool great. Me. Such a great vocal group. Uh, the chorus would have got me. The rest of them, I'm weak. But yeah, oh, I, I should have gotten fuck. that. The melody, I would have gotten that one. I'll give you one and maybe, no, I think you're on your way to a complete uh, bat in a thousand. All right. Hmm. Something's wrong. Shut the light. Heavy thoughts tonight. And they aren't of Snow White. Dreams of war, dreams of liars, dreams of dragon's fire, and of things that will bite. 
Wow. I got Ooh. Nothing. All right. I can even throw on the pre-chorus, I which I only know because it says here pre-chorus, not that I know the parts of music or anything, or that I know how to write a song, but <clears throat> sleep with one eye open. Oh. <laughs> That's the very next line. Gripping oh your pillow tight. Oh, God. So it's Metallica. Fuck. And the song is called... Uh, no, no, you're. It's not fun. You got it. I, 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 you didn't defeat. You're not defeated. Exit light. It is not called exit no, night. No, but I'm. I'm rocking. It's Inter Sandman. Take my hand. Off off to never, 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 never lamp. Wow, no, no. This is the song that uh, certain so people good. say is it's not heavy. If it's not heavy, there's no such fucking thing as heavy. There's no know? such thing. Well, fuck. I feel really sad. I thought for sure I'd pick stuff that you would know, and well, I did not. Well, this is one for the history books, a complete four, four uh, defeats for me and uh, four victories for you. That sucks. Very well, then. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So our next artist is the Van Saders. A song called Siren Song, again, right right on theme. Right. And they are rock, folk, punk. And I believe they actually said that they're country. I don't hear the country. Perhaps you will, but let's take a listen. That I fear in this world The devil in the bottle And the devil of a girl Stingy and darkness And back seats of cars The devil is waiting While she's knocking back her heart They say I'm getting better They say I'm getting green They say Kiss me. Okay, so we just listened to Siren Song by the Van Saders, I'm assuming. And uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I love that, you know, they, they lead with the, the title itself, so you know what you're getting into. At least it could be it could be about something else, but right. it's at least, uh, when, when it starts, you hear this heavy music. Oh, we're going to have a heavy sea song. Yes. Like Mountains, Nantucket, Sleigh Ride, or ah. uh, Cream's Tales of Brave Ulysses, or something like that, you know. Yes. I can kind of hear the folk thing uh, in, uh, it, it, it sort of sounds like, uh, like, like the Proclaimers, folk. kind of like an Irish ballroom folk punk. You know what? I love that you said that because I got the Irish thing right away and I thought, am I wrong about that? It does, right? It sounds like they would walk 500 yes. miles. I mean, it does. I it, they have that, that kind of punky Proclaimers They're kind of sound. New Jersey. Oh, no kidding. But I feel but see, that too. It doesn't say here where they're from, right. where it usually does. I don't does. tell you. Ah, I see. I know. But, I mean, it is that barroom kind of punk, but it's very intelligent. It is. And there's then all of a sudden, you really don't expect that searing 
Blue Oyster Cult Buck, Buck Dharma style lead solo, the lead guitar <laughs> thing. It's like, where the hell did that where come did from? Where that come wow. from? I know. And, but yet, it's sometimes the vocal is like this uh, snotty Green Day thing, yes. you know, with the, the voice and the melody, which is it's Welcome. totally punk. And yes. it's like Americana, you know, folk punk, uh, European. I would not have thought they were from New Jersey at all. And uh, it's an absolute smash. I loved yeah, it. Loved it. I thought it was great. It's. I always say punk songs that are that great are entirely too short. Yeah. But I love it. It's yeah. kind of like a one-two punch. If you We're kind of punk lovers here. In case we you really are. It. We really do love it. So if you want to hear more from them, and I know you do, go to Facebook and find them on The Van Saders. And that's V-A-N-S-A-D-E-R-S. And evidently, even though it's only been moments and the spittle has not even dried on my lips from the last feature I did... Oh my God. I'm being <laughs> I'm being told that I have to do another. That gives quite a visual, you know. And I think I have selected this time concerts to crow about. And for this feature, uh, we just share our most memorable concert experiences. And in this case, my first mm. on December third, nineteen seventy five. Yours truly was in the same room. With John Osborne, a.k.a. Ozzy, when the Birmingham, England native was celebrating his 27th birthday. Oh, he was a baby. Yeah, he was a kid. He was a pup in 75. Okay, so maybe the room was New York City's legendary Madison Square Garden, and maybe I didn't even know it was his birthday when I went there. But a grand time was had by all, and especially by young David, attending his very first concert at the tender age of 14. Oh, my goodness. I honestly can't recall how it was that I ended up going alone to Madison Square Garden at that age. I mean, isn't that kind of young? <laughs> Somebody, did your parents, like, drop you off like I used to get dropped off at the mall? I think it was my, my friend's uh, parents and everything, because uh, the dad worked in a newspaper, newspaper plant in New York City oh. or something, so he took us there a lot. But uh, anyway, but I was there. I really, it really happened, and it certainly was starting off a life of rock show attendance with a very big bang. This was this was years before his solo career, so Ozzy's name was not a household word as it's become since then. So this was Black Sabbath, and if you knew them, then you knew him, and uh, the rest of the gang, Tony and Geezer and Bill, in its original lineup. Until that time, the only incarnation. Osborne, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, and Bill Ward. The band was touring behind the release of their truly stunning album called Sabotage. And at the time, they were my favorite band in all the world. They've always been in the top three or five pantheon, but at that time, they were number one. Now, I've been to many concerts with no support acts, uh, as the British say. Led Zeppelin, Queen, Yes, Bowie. Uh, quite a few where the headliner was the only liner. But this show, however, was not one of those. There was an up-and-coming band, American band, on the bill as well. They, too, had released an album in 1975 and were promoting that. And the name of that album was Toys in the Attic. Oh, my God. Indeed, I'm referring to Aerosmith. Wow. So you're saying that two of the most iconic bands in rock history played together, promoting two masterpiece LPs? Surely you're not serious. <laughs> well, I'm completely serious. And don't... Call me Shirley. Okay. So you saw <laughs> I was coming going to, I was like... Uh... <laughs> She's thinking, not even he's that much of a cornball. No, I love it. <laughs> I was thinking, and I thought, do not interrupt this moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> let him, let <laughs> yeah. him get it out. Let him have his moment. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you see why I'm the Rambo of the 70s, you know. Nothing is over. You don't just turn it off. <laughs> the one drawback of the Stone Age, however, was that wanting to hear some band was sort of like making a wish sandwich. If you didn't have the record and your friends didn't have the records and it wasn't getting a bunch of airplay, you just didn't know what it was like, mm. which is, seems strange today. Uh, I had been reading about this Aerosmith in Cream and Circus magazines, seeing the glossy images of them in concert, frontman Steven Tyler with his grandiose lips, dressed like a harlequin and flamboyantly spinning his scarf-draped microphone stand over enthusiastic crowds. <laughs> but apart from a radio track or two, I wasn't familiar with their music. And they had had three albums out by this point, too. But when the lights went down, it took all of maybe 30 seconds for Tyler, Perry, Whitford, Hamilton, and Kramer to win themselves the 14-year-old proselyte. And if you've heard their self-titled debut album, then you have no doubt saluted them for a pitch-perfect recording career kickoff song, Make It, written by Steven Tyler, as was uh, most of the first album, mm. was also the perfect show opener. Good evening, people. Welcome to the show, Tyler sings, after the song has galloped through its aggressive opening like a snorting thoroughbred. <laughs> But since I didn't have an opportunity to listen to all the records, I couldn't claim to remember the set list, but Dream On, certainly they played mm. Walk This Way, and of course Train Kept the Rolling stood out big oh, time uh, after Make It. 
As for Black Sabbath, well, well, that was my dream come true at the time. Uh, many of this band's greatest songs involve all sorts of curious and unpredictable segues and multiple tempo changes and all kinds of out-of-left-field stuff that is so beautifully orchestrated uh, to seem as if it's something everybody does. Mm. And there's no better example of that than the song they opened with, probably my personal favorite song of theirs, Killing Yourself to Live. Mm. Then they tore through some stuff from the new album, Sabotage, a lot of the old favorite crowd pleasers, which are nowhere near their best but are always awesome to hear. Then at some point it was revealed to us that frontman Ozzy had survived another year. because <laughs> uh, he wasn't famous for uh, near deaths then. Uh, we've all seen movies with girls jumping out of cakes, but I can honestly say I had never seen that in real life until this night at the Garden. Mm. A young lady in a devil suit, no less, jumped out, gave a peck on the cheek to the still coherent Osborne, who shouted, Happy Birthday! And it wasn't just the week, it was the actual day. So every year I get that reminder, it pops up, today's Ozzy's birthday. I'm like, yeah, that was the day of the Sabbath concert. I was there. Yep. Uh, and it was, uh, bef- this was before he developed the irritating habit of constantly badgering the audience to make some fucking noise, let me see your fucking hands, blah, 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 during the instrumental breaks when the real geniuses were playing. <laughs> At the time, he was just the singer of my favorite band, and I loved them all equally. They didn't shy away from their progressive stuff either, laying down Spiral Architect with help from keyboardist Jez Woodruff. It was just a perfect evening with peak performances by two legendary bands from either side of the pond. Uh, Interestingly, both of the careers of Aerosmith and Black Sabbath have followed similar tracks. There were flagging sales, lineup changes, infighting and drug problems, etc. Of course. The near dissolutions of these bands, but... There was no keeping them down, and in the end, both rose back to the top of the heap and were embraced by several generations as the true rock legends and heroes that they are. The original Black Sabbath, well, 75% of them, reunited, put out one last album, and went on a phenomenally successful world tour to say farewell. And Aerosmith, well, they're still at it and doing bang up in the business with a residency in Las Vegas. I know. I want to see it. Yeah. Of course, some of the former arena bands are now doing tours of great hole-in-the-wall rock clubs like the Viper Room and the Whiskey A Go-Go, where it's actually a hell of a lot more fun to see them. And uh, as for them, even though they might not be raking it in, they'll definitely each still give you... As for those bands, congratulations to Black Sabbath and Aerosmith, but as for the other bands, though they may not be raking it in, they'll definitely still give you a concert to crow about. Ooh. All right, so from amazing concerts to another amazing artist, we only have two more left in this show. This particular artist is from Ontario, Kelso Jeans. And the song is, I know, it's going to be shocking, Siren Song. And the genre is emo, shoegaze, alternative, and dream. I like the sound of that, so let's take a listen.
Kelso Jeans, and we just heard Siren Song. I know it's hard to believe it's that title, but again, Siren Song. What are your thoughts? Well, um, f- before you started playing it, I'm just mulling over the, um, the, the whole thing because they said sh- they had to say shoegaze and put that idea in my head. Yes. And I'm thinking like, okay, well, to the best of my knowledge, sirens don't wear shoes. So maybe they're gazing at their own shoes and oblivious to the sirens, which would keep them safe. Okay. Or perhaps the sirens are staring at their shoes and that then they forget to sing and then they're safe also. So either way, it's a very happy idea. But then the music comes on and it's really it's well, I mean the lyrics are so there's something so icy about them. The best part is waiting for it to end. I mean it's and this is uh I you don't catch the lyrics. I don't catch the lyrics a lot on the first. I tried in this one to catch them all, but I couldn't the first time. Yeah. But it, this one clearly does not seem to be about an actual siren out in the water. This is or on on an island. This is um, something else like drugs or something like that. It's it's some powerful. The whole thing has like an institutional feel to it. It's very stark. It's very like I don't know. To me, it seems like it's from somebody in a facility someplace. I mean, really in, in a bad way. But uh, with lyrics like, you know, something about putting my brain in a sock and swinging around, you know, I mean, it's it's just really heavy and, and brilliant, you know, because it's so evocative. I, I, there's a word I haven't used in probably an mm, hour here. There it is. Uh, evocative, it's spectral, it's theatrical. No, it's not that. Well, but. she says ethereal. Yeah, it's yeah. in the song. That's right. Yeah. It's in the lyric, ethereal. I thought that was cool. And yet, for all of that, you know, that... I don't know that gravity. The, the the music is comfortable. I mean, it isn't in, in exceedingly dark. It's not like it's off putting or anything. It's oh, you get kind of really into it. It's like the other ones. Uh, there's a certain kind of you know, uh, I don't know, lulling that all of these songs have done, except for the punk, except for the punk one, of course. Yeah. Right. But uh, the, uh, the it's beautiful, and uh, that's what you might think from a song that had sirens in the title. And indeed, even though this one about isn't about the the kind that makes you crash your ships. <laughs> It uh, it was very alluring, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna get closer every time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was about sirens traditionally, although I did get some of that uh, a siren song sort of thing. But I think a really a really uh, tragic one, of course. But I really love shoegaze and emo. I really like those two things together, and they are perfect here. I really feel like there was an innocence and a purity about this. Um, an optimism, her voice, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, with the music, I like the washiness, the shoegaze, right? Is is kind of that that it's a wash in and like reverb, a wash in you know these different sounds, and I just I find it really beautiful. Um, and I think she keeps singing, "It's just a wave." And I thought, if that's what she's singing, how profound is that? Because life really is a series of just waves. And if you just ride it, mm. you'll get through it. And I like that that's how the song ends. It's just a, and then it's kind of over. So I just thought, wow, you know, that's that's really interesting. Because she could have been saying it's just a wave. And at the end, the wave overtook her. So it's it's very interesting. And, and I didn't get all the lyrics either. But I it definitely... Evocative, provocative. I mean, it's it's certainly uh, gripping, and um, I'm certainly glad that I stumbled upon Kelso Jeans. And if you would like to visit her other songs, she has many. Feel free to find her on Facebook at K E L S O Jeans. And our last artist that we have coming up is also from Ontario. Great things keep coming out of Ontario. And, I don't know what's and the UK <laughs> exactly. So finally, Americans, time. Can, Americans, can you step up, please? I mean, come on. So finally, well, we had we had New Jersey. Yeah, we had that's New true. Jersey. That's true. So here we go. My little feature. I mean, the other feature I did was various, but this one is mine. So it's I'll do it better than you, Moo, and it's actually your fault. Ah. Uh, for this feature, we discuss covers of songs that either rival or are better than the original. And it was just something that kind of came up. I don't even know how. I mean, so much weird shit comes up when you and I talk. It just happens. But me and Bobby McGee came up, and um, obviously everybody knows the famous cover by Janis Joplin. Everybody knows that. Uh, Even if you were living under a rock, they brought it to you under the rock, played it for you, and at least you could go, okay, I know what that is. So the thing that most people don't know is obviously that 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 song is written by Chris Christopherson, and that he actually performed it in a very, very, very country folky way. And it's lovely. It's very earnest and it's very sincere and it's very, um, 
you know, down home and it it's 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 just lovely. It really is. And I get why that's the origin. And I also get why Janice did did what she did to it. Mm. But I will say, and this is not going to be popular. I don't have an issue with Janice Joplin, but Janice Joplin did a lot of screaming, and I'm mm. not a big screamy person. Um, she has a lot of soul, had a lot of soul, definitely did a lot of that, and I know a lot of that is raw. People see that as very raw, and ooh, I like that rawness. That rawness is fine for about a minute and a half, and then it becomes a little grating for me. So it's interesting because I went and looked at other people who did covers of Me and Bobby McGee, people like... Willie Nelson, people like Johnny Cash, people like Dolly Parton. Lots of people did covers. But the cover that I loved the most was not Janis Joplin, and I did not like the original as much. Yes? Yeah, it's the one that I can't think of, the one you didn't mention that did it and had a big hit with it. Uh, and as soon as you say it, I'll remember. I don't think she had a big hit with it, but it is in the style of Pink. Oh, Pink. No, it so, was some country singer. Yeah, you know? no, so Pink did it. And I think Pink did it best because Pink has a couple of things. So first of all, Chris Christopherson has the country and the folk, and that's fine. That's the intention of the song, and it's beautiful, and it's well done. Then Janis Joplin brought the folk and then the rock and the blues, right, which was great. And the whole ending of that song is incredible because that, of her. Yeah, that whole right? big vamp, you know. Right, that is that is all Janice. But what Pink brought is in the style of Janice, which is way better than Emu. It just is. She brought, obviously, rock and folk and blues, but then she brought a little bit of R&B and a little bit of gospel. And that drove it home for me. There are a few artists who do covers as consistently well as Pink. I mean, I mean, there are artists voice. that do covers, and it's like, oh, it's nice that they're doing it, but it's not the best, or you know, this one's okay and that one's not. But Pink, every pretty much every cover she does is great because she's an incredible singer. It's like Highway to Hell, you know. Uh, she does the Bohemian Rhapsody, even uh, lots of good covers. She is an underrated singer. Yeah, I think a, a great many people, like I said, I, I follow a hundred. Rock, music posts on Inst uh, accounts on Instagram, and a lot of people recognize that she's a great rock singer. I just think that people don't people discount her as just a pop artist, but she is so much more than that. She is so well rounded. She is so incredibly talented. I mean, I feel like it's it's interesting because she's kind of like the Lady Gaga of pop to me. She's just amazing. She's an incredible performer. She's a powerhouse vocalist, um, and she writes catchy fucking tunes, but then she can turn out other people's songs like nobody's business, but she interprets them with love and with all this heart. And if you, any time that I watched, I watched so many videos of her singing this song, mm. and just, she's just a hundred thousand percent in, and it's beautiful. I am trying to remember if I've ever seen it. I'm sure it's great. I didn't know she did it, I don't think. If I ever saw it, I completely forgot it. Uh, I still can't remember who it was I thought you were going to say, but that one I can imagine, uh, and since Emu, we're talking about Christopherson here, yeah. I imagine that would smoke it, because I think Janice's does too. It's, but it smokes Janice's for me too. Yeah, see, I might think so too if I heard it, but I would have to just compare Janice's and uh, Christopherson's. And I would say, yeah, it's better. The, even the subtle... Lyrical changes, like, you know, it just work better for the song. Like, uh, he said, from the coal mines of Kentucky to the California sun. And Janice changed it to, from the Kentucky coal mines to the California sun. It's just beautiful. Uh, there are so many little subtle touches like that, plus that big vamp at the end, as you said. I'm going to have to listen to this pink thing because I'm sure it is badass because she does killer covers. Yeah, so I think we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. We're going to whoosh away. Okay, so... You've just heard Pink do Me and Bobby McGee, so she's my pick for Emu. What about you? Well, now having heard that, um, we, I was talking about what great cover she does. Another example, and this is similar to that, just her and a guitarist sitting there doing uh, Baby, I'm Going to Leave You from Led Zeppelin 1. It was freaking astounding, you yeah. know. And this was even more so. Yeah. This is way better than Emu, than, uh, well, the Christopherson or the Janis Joplin version. Yeah. Because... Well, Pink is a much, much better singer 
than Janis Joplin. She Most just people is. Are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean Janis Joplin, she's okay, but honestly she's way, way overrated in my yeah, in both I of agree. our opinions. Yeah. You know? And Pink is just I mean, that was a phenomenal performance. Just and you can ima- see with Janice's version, there's a band in full swing at the end. Pianos, blah, 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 and she's doing this van and everything is just rocking along. Even without that, Pink's version stripped bare, mm-hmm. unplugged, and it's better. It is. It's so well sung that I mean, it just gives you chills. You'll it completely does. forget every version you ever heard. Absolutely. Now I uh, have inherited from somebody a, an album of Chris Christopherson singing his own songs that were most of them that were hits for other people, sure, like Johnny Cash and Janis Joplin. And um, so I was listening to that song, and honestly, there's something about his version of it. I, I wept openly. It's I just beautiful. it's beautiful. There's and, a purity and an innocence uh, and an earnestness, and that and that that gut wrenching line it just kind of sails right by you if you stop and think about the gravity of it. I'd trade all of my tomorrows for one single yesterday. yesterday. Uh, Let me give you a word of advice, folks. Don't ever love anyone that much. Okay, that's <laughs> fucked up. I'm sorry, but that's a heavy line right there. You know, all my tomorrows, my last day. If I can spend it with Bobby, one more day with Bobby. Oh my goodness. But um, yeah, Pink's version is. Everything that's so, you know what I would love to hear because Christopherson is still with us. I would love to hear what he thinks of that. You know, I'm sure he loves it. I'm sure he I'm does. Sure, Christ- yeah. I just recently learned he, he's a Rhodes Scholar. I had no idea he was a Rhodes Scholar, and of course, a very very successful actor as well, and uh, yeah. great songwriter. And yes, piercing blue eyes, right? <laughs> I, was, I was listening to the record and I sent Christina a clip of the album cover and of that song, Those and eyes. his uh, his Why Me Lord also, which was a Johnny Cash hit. You know. Uh, very, very talented. Very handsome gentleman very handsome, as well. Powerful. So, But, yeah. I mean, the defin- uh. now, as of like five minutes ago, the definitive version of me and Bobby McGee, live and unplugged and all, is now Pink's it's because Pink's. it's beyond anything anyone's ever done with the song before. Absolutely. There is and just- I was not expecting that exactly. As, as much as I know she does killer covers, I wasn't exactly expecting it to blow the, the Janis Joplin version away because it's got, you know, I don't know. But I, once I heard it was going to be acoustic, I thought, no way is this going to... And then of she course. starts singing. Yeah. It's like, holy shit. And within you know? the first, like, yeah. 10 seconds, you go, oh, yeah, it's better. And then you hear it, and the gospel, you heard the gospel yeah. creep in, it's, and the R&B creeps in, all of the stuff that Pink loves. There's so much There's so much soul in this. The, the vocal is just absolutely perfect. And I know some people, she sings it faithfully, mm-hmm. but with ex- just the right amount of soul, it's just... Kind of like Janice, only with a lot better voice. Yes, you know? exactly. And um, that is perfect. Now, a lot of people will take a song and they'll do a cover and they'll try to soul it up and they'll be yelping all this go- these long-winded gospel things and everything that just kind of abominate the already perfectly sublime melody. But this one is out of this world. you got to hear it. I mean, I was really stunned by that. Absolutely. So two things that I have to disagree. Fall in love that much, people. Fall in love so much that you would give anything for one more day with that person. That is a huge part of what life is about, loving somebody that much. It just is. And secondly, I do like some of those versions that are overly gospel. I do love them. I like it when they take me to church. And it's okay if it's completely different. If they want to take me to church, I'll. if I don't want to go to church, I'll listen to that version. If I want to go to church, I'll listen to this one. But I do think this particular version is the perfect in between. And I just love it. So Pink did it better than emu and even better than janice with whom we without her we would not have had this version right? no so no she, she yeah she that did ju- this that is where the you know the transformation from yes. christopherson's version although it's surprisingly close it isn't at the same it time you right. know so janice really took it to where all pink had to do was just do it over cut it down and just uh, so much more deliver it with so that. just deliver it with yeah. this the perfect voice you know Absolutely. So Chris Christopherson, the country, the folk, Janice brought the folk rock and blues. Pink brought the rock, folk, blues, gospel and R&B. And she did it better than Emu. And that's the end of that story. All right. So this is our second Ontario artist. And again, I didn't go looking for Ontario artists. The sirens came to me. <laughs> sirens, are, sirens are a big deal in Ontario. Yeah. So this song is by an artist named Julie Neff. And I know it's crazy, but the song name is Siren Call. And the genres are ambient, alternative, ethereal, indie pop. So uh, let's take a listen to this. Again, another take on uh, the classic uh, Siren story. Wrap me up in a warm embrace just to see my face. 
face just to close this space and I felt you move from across the room with your big bright eyes you can feel it too oh and you're mine for the thousandth time running down your spine you can feel my eyes and the warmth it builds it's a glistening almost deafening but it takes two to take Okay, Julie Neff and Siren Call. So what are your thoughts on this one? Well, I, I was looking at the at the genre description. I was thinking, like, wait a, minute, wait a minute, that doesn't sound very uh, ethereal, but it says alternative ethereal. Yes. It's like, okay, that must be a different animal that I haven't <laughs> heard about because the drums are pounding pretty damn heavy and hard for ethereal. There's a lot of ethereal There's a going lot of, on, yeah. but in, in there between, is. There is. it's like... Interwoven, but it's it's got a pretty it's got a lot of heavy beating t- for uh, sure. To, you know. That build and up. Uh, I don't know what kind of ambient it is, but I'm, uh, maybe that's the rest of the music and not this particular track because this one's kind of uh, kind of hard. It uh, the, and what I love the main body of it where there's a bunch of lines that kind of loop together in this really engaging run on sentence. It just weaves, it's coils around you, and then there are these heavy asides with very few syllables. It's the exact opposite. It's a, it's an interesting. A uh, study of contrast. It's a, it was a very striking song. So nice going, Julie. Yeah, I really like the. I mean, this feels like it's radio friendly. I can hear people singing the takes two to tango. Woo. I can hear it. Right. You know, people kind of 
singing it. Um, I love the buildup of the drums because it kind of builds that tension and then there's that release. Uh, I really, you know, I really like the fact that she says stuff like draw them in with our siren call. I like that there's an actual kind of connection there because that makes good sense to me and I like it. I like that that was there and again you're hearing the water sounds, right? Because we've seen a couple of those songs bring in the water sounds to kind of drive home that I whole... would too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would. I would not do that. I would probably use my vocals to create a, a water-like sound or to create some sort of soundscape same thing. like that. No, not the same <laughs> thing. Not at all. Well, <laughs> but... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cheese ball like uh, the natives are restless. You know, I got your jungle animal sounds. You know. <laughs> but uh, uh, whether they use them or not, the uh, it, it creates that atmosphere. It yeah. did, absolutely. And I, I love the ending, the the very, the end with all the vocals. And it just, it was like kind of a run and just absolutely beautiful. And it was unexpected from beginning to end. And I like that. And it was something I wasn't expecting because I only listened to the few sec, the first few, like it has to get me in the first like 20 seconds or I don't. And I, I want this to be authentic so I don't listen to the rest of the song. I listen to it here live so that there's that authentic response. But I really, I really like this. I love her voice. And I think that this is certainly alternative, uh, certainly indie pop, certainly alternative ethereal. And I love it. If you love it too, and I hope you do, go to Facebook and follow her at julie neff music and that's julie n-e-f-f music ontario doing well ontario doing well so uh wow it's your turn again definitely not going to blame canada for that you know? <laughs> we can but we can. in the best way yeah. uh, credit canada not credit blame canada, canada, credit canada yes canada. Uh, and you're right about the pop absolutely it, it yes. did not lose that right? well and uh-oh could it be time to wrap this puppy up on a neat little blanket? Could it Seems be? Seems like it. Already? After only, what, six, seven hours has only it been? Only like 27 hours. Yeah. Ah, coming up, winging it. What the heck is winging it? Okay, well, we're glad you asked, if you don't know. Uh, it's a short show about one music-related topic. No tracks, no features, just an informal chat where opinions and laughter are promised. At least that we have a pretty good batting average with that. <laughs> Uh, we offer up something new every week, or we all try. Right. We are right. All right. All so right. look, okay. Look, so we know, said that we said happens, sorry about yeah. the last three weeks. There was illness. There was excessive work. It was a lot. But now we're back. Our, our sincerest intention is to offer up something new. And you know, if we don't, you haven't heard all of our shows, have you? Then right. Go back exactly. and listen to them. And, well, and then also, it, it, we're just saying we're we're loyal to the game. So if we don't. You know, there's some serious shit. Going yeah, on. we don't we don't take it lightly. No, we don't take uh, not doing the show lightly. Right. And uh, we invite you to listen to us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Deezer, and uh, many more. Always click subscribe and enable notifications. We'll tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, got a new Birds of a Feather show. Exactly. Except for it didn't work this week. I don't know yeah, what the hell was up with that. We we only we're only the content creators. Yeah, we're just gonna say we're, we're the producers, the on air talent, and we don't get notified. We're but. gonna blame Podbean, but no, we're not. We're gonna probably blame ourselves. Yeah, I, I didn't get. We'll I didn't work get it shit. out. They didn't say shit to me. Okay. <laughs> All right, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at both on air. That's B O A F on air, as in Birds of a Feather on air. This is where we advertise our new themes. Uh, tell your friends and bands to send in their music. For Christina to listen to, we want to, <laughs> we want to grow our flock, and we need your help in this glorious pursuit. Yes, uh, please share us on your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. Feeds, share your birds with the world, and that's about uh, you come. Uh, we've come to the end of the road, as the boys sang. Yes, they did, and that only leaves for you to say. Let's get the flock out of here. <laughs> This has been Birds of a Feather on What the Flock Radio.